Chess friends, today I want to share an incredible chess opening strategy for the bishop's opening that will help you develop new chess skills and opening ideas, if you'd like to see my tournament games, alpha zero games, or any chess related videos, feel free to ask in the comments, let's get started, this opening begins after playing pawn to e4, when black responds, symmetrically with pawn to e5, you can bring your bishop out to c4, this move is quite effective and forms a solid opening. It doesn't weaken or sacrifice anything, making it a safe choice however, it's not as commonly used as knight f3, which gives you a surprise advantage since many opponents are less familiar with the bishop's opening, this can lead to nice victories for you, after playing bishop c4, your opponent will typically bring out their knight to attack your pawn, you'll defend this pawn, and then they often play bishop c5, expecting you to play knight f3 and follow the usual sequence, however, in this strategy. You delay developing the knight to keep the option of advancing the pawn, instead, you develop the other knight first, at this stage, opponents often move their pawn to d6 or make another move, here, we play pawn to f4, this move allows us to start attacking immediately, resembling an upgraded version of the king's gambit, just like in the king's gambit, we attack the opponent's king by playing pawn to e4 followed by pawn to f4, in this situation, targeting the opponent's king becomes much easier. Unlike the king's gambit, it's not a true gambit anymore because your bishop defends the f4 pawn, so you're not sacrificing anything, this makes f4 a really effective move, after advancing the f4 pawn, in many variations, this pawn will continue to move forward, creating a strong presence on the king's side, this pressure block grants you a significant space advantage and sets the stage for your future attacks this position is crucial in the bishop's opening. As your opponent now has several options to choose from, some players who like to play aggressively might not like it when you make the move f4 because it can make your king more vulnerable along a certain diagonal, they might respond by playing knight g4 because that move threatens knight f2, it would put your queen and rook in a tricky position, as their queen might move to h4 to attack, and their bishop could come to f2, making things look good for black, so, Knight g4 is their initial strategy. Apart from aggressive moves like knight g4, they might opt for normal development with moves like knight c6, which we'll discuss too. Another possibility is that after you play knight f4, some opponents may capture there. If they haven't seen my video explaining why taking is a mistake, they might take on f4, which actually works out well for you. Just a quick heads up or a little sneak peek in all three scenarios. Black will face a swift defeat if you watch this video till the end. You'll learn how to punish black effectively, let's begin with black's most aggressive attempt, knight g2 to g4, which can be quite challenging, black has several threats in this position, so, how do you handle that? Interestingly, there's a clever response here, you can play your move to f5 anyway, sort of disregarding black's plans entirely, additionally, Playing to f5 effectively neutralizes the bishop, which is a key idea behind this move. The bishop loses its activity along that diagonal and no longer protects the knight, leaving the knight vulnerable and in a hanging position, indeed, capturing the vulnerable knight becomes a desirable option, furthermore. Black will find it challenging to activate or bring the bishop into play due to the blockade created by your pawn structure, hindering the bishop's movement. And let me tell you a quote in sudden. You have to get up every morning and tell yourself. I can do this. Alright, at this point, black needs to deal with the threat, although they're somewhat pleased as they intended to play knight f2, targeting your queen and rook, however, you unleash a powerful counterattack with the unexpected move queen h5, threatening the scholar's checkmate, while your opponent may quickly notice this threat, they might not be overly concerned since they can defend against it quite easily, if black chooses to castle kingside or play g6, both options work in your favor once more. If they castle, you continue your counter-attack by playing bishop g5, involving your bishop in the action, this move not only attacks black's queen but also brings your pieces closer to the opponent's king, intensifying the pressure, after playing bishop g5, if black protects their queen, they are unable to advance the pawn in front of their king because it is pinned down by your light square bishop, this initial bishop is indeed quite powerful as it exerts pressure and limits black's options. After black moves their queen to safety, 
you can proceed with knight d5, ignoring the fact that black may capture your rook, the focus is not on protecting the rook but on advancing towards a potential checkmate against black, after playing knight d5, your opponent might anticipate that you will capture the pawn to attack their rook and queen, while this is a possible idea, the real threat lies elsewhere. If black captures the rook, as they often do, you alter the knight's path and play knight f6 instead of taking the pawn, this surprising move sets up a quick checkmate against black in just a few moves, black is compelled to capture the knight since it threatens their king and queen and sets up a checkmate threat with queen takes h7 on the next move, once black takes the knight, your bishop recaptures, leaving black vulnerable to a quick checkmate with moves like queen g5, queen g7, or through other squares like queen g4, queen g7, queen h6, queen g7, in essence, you're achieving checkmate against black within the following two or three moves, this strategy can help you beat many skilled players, even really strong ones, black's moves seem natural and tempting, but your surprise moves can catch them off guard, this combination often leads to winning games easily from this position, in this position, black might also opt to defend their h-pawn by playing g6. This move seems natural because it kicks your queen away, and they still have hopes of capturing your rook on h1, black might think they are winning because they plan to take your rook on the next move, playing g6 weakens many dark squares around black's king, which works to our advantage, we respond with queen h6, advancing our queen closer to black's king, this move sets us up to attack black's rook and the pawn on f7 in certain variations, since black doesn't have many alternatives. They will likely take our rook, next, we play bishop g5, adding another attacking piece to the mix, which puts us in a winning position once again, this move targets black's queen, and if it moves, we can use the same tactic as before with knight d5, bringing our knight into the attack, knight f6 becomes very strong, attacking both the king and the queen, the threat of queen g7 remains, leaving black without a good defense, let's rewind a bit, it's common for black to play f6. Hoping to gain an advantage in tempo, and you might consider retreating your bishop, however, in this variation, we opt for capturing on g6, what's particularly appealing about this move sequence is how effective this opening is compared to the king's gambit, unlike the king's gambit, where the f-pawn is sacrificed or captured early on, here our f-pawn not only wasn't sacrificed or captured initially but has also contributed significantly to our position, take a look at this sequence. We advance the pawn from f4 to f5 and now capture the pawn on g6, with plans to promote it into a new queen, black is in a tough spot because capturing black would expose their rook on h8, which is pinned. If black tries to capture your bishop or makes another move, your attack continues with threats against their rook, leaving black with few defenses, exactly, our bishop controls the crucial square, allowing the pawn to capture the rook safely, meanwhile, Black's king remains vulnerable to our ongoing attack, leading to a completely winning position for us, now that we've discussed why knight g4 is a tempting but ultimately bad option for black, let's move on to other possible moves. I didn't cover the move bishop g4 in this video, because I am gonna make another video where Fisher demonstrates how white can win in that position, so subscribe my channel now to stay updated with my channel. Now, Let's shift our focus to other options like developing moves, such as knight c6 or capturing the pawn on f4, if black chooses to develop with knight c6, you can still proceed with the same move, advancing the pawn to f5, which is a highly advantageous plan in many variations, it provides a significant space advantage on the kingside, restricts black's bishop, and makes it challenging for black to defend their kingside effectively, after playing f5, black typically castles which is the most normal move in this position. Now, we play bishop g5, and surprisingly, black is somewhat defenseless at this point, the pin created by bishop g5 is crucial, our plan is straightforward and standard, we'll proceed with knight d5, taking advantage of this pin and putting more pressure on black's knight, by capturing the knight, we expose black's king and prepare to attack it, additionally, it's advantageous that our queen is positioned to join the attack along this diagonal, once you remove the pawn from f6. Our queen can join the attack with significant impact, potentially leading to a decisive advantage for us, that's indeed our plan, and black doesn't have many options to prevent it, 
if they try h6 to force your bishop away, you can simply bring it back to h4, which is a solid move, however, an even stronger move is playing the thematic move pawn to h4, which is effective in various openings and adds significant strength to your position, we keep up the pressure by sticking to our plan. We'll still play knight d5, capturing on f6, and then after black recaptures, we'll take the pawn, for instance, absolutely, our attacking plan remains consistent regardless of black's moves. If black tries to capture our bishop, it backfires because our rook can now join the attack, and we are also prepared to deliver a checkmate along the h-file, if black moves their knight away, we bring our queen out to form a battery along the h-file with the rook. Our queen is then poised to checkmate black either on h7 or h8 if the knight moves. This sequence effectively concludes the attack, sure, let's consider a scenario where black plays rook to e8 to provide an escape route for their king, in this position, white can achieve checkmate in three moves, this presents a fun puzzle for us to solve, let's find a checkmate in three moves, while white can win after many regular moves, there's only one way to achieve checkmate in three moves. Your task is to figure it out, and if you can, share your answer in the comments below. The final option we'll discuss is black capturing the pawn on f4, this is advantageous for you because it allows you to develop your bishop with tempo, and then black will typically castle, next, you bring your knight out, and in this position, the most common move by black is bishop g4. And let me tell you a quote in sudden for you. Be strong enough to be patient while you are waiting for your blessings to show up. Many players think that pinning your knight with bishop g4 is a powerful move, but it's actually not as strong as it seems, I will make a separate video explaining how you can punish black for playing this move, for now, let me show you one way to do it, one effective strategy is to target black's bishop with your attack and use it to create a quick and powerful attack on the king side, you can start by playing h3, if your opponent wants to keep the pin, they'll retreat their bishop. If they capture your knight instead, that's good for you, having the two bishops is an advantage because bishops are generally stronger than knights, after this, your plan remains the same, continuing with your attacking strategy, next, you play g4 to attack black's bishop, which forces it to retreat, here's the trick, we outwit black by expanding on the king side, and then quickly play queen d2 to move our king to safety on the queen side. The expansion allows our pawns to be ready for a swift and aggressive attack against black, after black's move, let's say knight c6, we will castle, regardless of black's next move, which is often knight d4, it's not a big concern, knight d4 attacks our knight, but we can handle that by trading pieces, then, we proceed with h4, h5, to quickly launch an attack on black's position, your attack is quicker than any potential counterattack from black, playing h5 will capture black's bishop, then, you can play g5 to attack the knight, your pawns can advance further, exposing the king and launching an attack along the open files, ultimately leading to victory, that's our straightforward winning strategy, and black doesn't have much to counter it, that wraps up today's chess video, if you enjoyed the content, feel free to comment, like, and subscribe for more episodes, wishing you all the best, and see you soon.